Hello there. Welcome to One on One. My name is Bridget Otu. On One on One tonight, we're looking at a number of things. Top is the, the vice presidential nominee of the National Democratic Congress, Professor Jane Nana Upoku. She has been renominated by the former president of the Republic, who is the flag bearer of the NDC, John Dramani Mahama. What does she bring to the ticket, uh, people are asking. Also, we will compare her performance in 2020 compared to other vice presidential uh, candidates as well, and especially in her home region. Uh, what we found out was shocking. We'll also talk about generally, you know, what would make an individual say, look, I am voting. Is, is just having a female presidential, vice presidential nominee enough? What would make you go to the poll and say, I am voting John Dramani Mahama because of Jane Nana Opoku. We also talk generally about you know, how women, are ha women who are in offices are handling the kind of vitriol they face, the scrutiny they face when they put themselves up for uh, public service or public office. We'll be right back to look at this with lawyer Joyce Bauer Moktari. Welcome back. Um, Joyce Bauer Mokhtari is a lawyer and also a special aide to the former president of the Republic, John Dramani Mahama, who is the flag bearer of the NDC in the 2024 elections. Uh, welcome. Thank you. Right. So first of all, I mean, I'm excited that she has been renominated because my, 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 my earlier I was like, OK, if you're going to change her, what would be the reason for changing her. I'm interested in hearing your thoughts on her renomination and how you think that women can galvanize or put themselves together to, to support and get her elected to make history. Bridget, I'm sure that you have always been a foremost feminist. I'm sure that the fact that history is being made on this occasion is not lost on you. I have no doubt in my mind that Nana Jane was picked more for her qualities as a credible leader, as a fantastic administrator, as a woman who has a chop many, many firsts. Note that immediately after Nana Jane left the University of Cape Coast, what did we see on the scene of right. academia? Right. All of our main public universities are now being what? Led by females. Right. Fantastic females. UG is Professor Ab Abba. Yeah. Uh, Abba Amfo. Amfo. Right. And then you have another lady in uh, Kwame Nkrumah, University yes. of Science and Technology yes. as well. Yeah. And then the U has in, uh, in the Volta region. I believe that she should be retiring mm -hmm. the next few months. Right. So that is something phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Then take a second look also at Nana Jane Opokwajima, the small little girl from Commander. She was senior prefect of Wesley Girls High School, way before I even imagined taking my common interest. That's another thing that we forget about. Mm -hmm. Her life was always designed to lead in many, many directions. Okay. I'm sure at the time when that little girl entered Wesley Hills High School, when she became a senior prefect, she had no idea. Check the history of former senior prefects of Wesley Hills High School, mm. each one of them. And let me say hello, not just to Nana Jean Sam, as she then was, okay. but to now Professor Nana Jane Opokwajima. History will always be kind to mm. individuals like Nana. And the stories that replete with women whose lives started long before even we mm. heard about them. So I have no doubt in my mind that Nana Jane represents for us an example of female excellence, the type of female that we want to see as vice president, the type of female that all of us can relate to. First, let's look at her modesty in approach and in her life. Let's look at her credentials. I think she has about three or four professorial qualifications. Yes. An author by excellence. A woman whose reputation transcends the walls of Ghana and became the very first female chancellor of an international female university. A position she holds up to date. She served on the boards of UNDP, no smaller body, and many others. She has raised three amazing young adults. All professors as we speak. Yes. 
and grandchildren in that regard. Make no mistake, Nana's life represents what all of us women aspire to. So her nomination or renomination actually inspires for even better or more inclusion. Right. I mean, and, and it speaks to the theme for the year, talking about ins uh, as Absolutely. inspiring Absolutely. Uh, inclusion, that without even have to, have to write a script, her life yeah. story speaks, speaks to that. Yes. And, but then you hear criticisms, and I, I, I am sometimes dumbfounded by the criticism. Uh, criticism, I have never heard anybody say, Jane Nanopoku is a thief. Yeah. I have never heard anybody say she's corrupt yeah, yeah. because these would be telling these would be terrible attributes for somebody to 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 have or to wear yeah. and we have a lot of men who wear these uh, capes sometimes even shamelessly yeah. but you don't hear that but you hear oh she's not approachable oh she's not all over the place and what do you think people who have side views you know what is it that we are so used to um, I, I don't want to use the word like rubbish. Like we're so used to having very light-headed people that when we see quality, we kind of either are afraid to go for the quality or don't know what to do exactly with the quality. Let me say something and let me ask this before I even respond to you. Right. Have you ever heard a woman boosting, no. bragging? No. Mm -hmm. I mean, till date, if you ask me, Joyce, tell me about yourself, you'd find me blushing. It's not something that any woman is used to. Go to the classrooms and see the women who lead in every subject that is taught. The many women married to men that they are a hundred times smarter than. The many women dating men that they are a hundred times sharper than. Mm -hmm. And go to all the spheres. In banking, in media, for example, where we have many women who are leading. How often do you hear them? boast about what they are or what they are not, yeah. brag about what they've achieved or what they have not. You know, it is a way that women also carry themselves. There are some who will tell you that the women who are successful are those who are bashing all over the place, yeah. boxing with men all over the place. But remember that most of the examples in 2008, when I was a student in the United States, for example, I met Justice Gainsbourg. A woman for whom there's enormous history, serving on the Supreme Court of the United States of America. Her voice was so soft, largely a very small diminutive figure. Mm. But you know, when she spoke in front of the class, mm. nobody was in any doubt that this was an intelligent woman, with enormous experience. A woman who, as soon as you hear her, you turn, but all you see is this very mm. smallish woman huge glasses but history was way ahead of her look at all the women leaders that we know take margaret thatcher woman of modern day history mm. how much of herself did she talk about she got the job done take for example angela merkel when she left after 16 years europe celebrated her like they've never yeah. done before I but I, think just yes like how often did you yeah. hear her boast or brag about Just it. Just adding. Many of them. Yeah. Young woman, in fact. Yeah. She got to a point where she felt, I've had enough of it. Yeah. Let me focus on the things that matter. How often do you hear a man challenge himself to give up so another person can take the space? You know, let's say one thing. Women will always be different in our style, in our approach to history, mm -hmm. in our approach to leadership, in our approach to managing anything that is given to us. Make no mistake, in terms of impact, in terms of development, in terms of making a difference, nurturing, grooming, mentoring, name it, all the creative things that you want to think about. These are the great examples of women that we have. But you will never hear them boastfully telling you who the hell they think they are, but boastfully telling you just how big the size of their feet are. It is not something that women do. Yeah. But that is not to mean that women are not effective right. or that they are not impactful. And let me tell you one thing. Nana is so approachable that sometimes you even marvel. Why? Who would you meet in the morning who would tell you, oh, Joyce, I love those colors. Oh, you know, I listened to you and I was so excited. <laughs> oh, encourage you. Think about it. How often? If there's anybody who has understood what our cultural nuances can do to female aspirations 
of female inclusion. It has to be Nana Jane of Okwajima, more than anybody. No, look, Bridget, you work with many men. I'm one of those women that maybe on any team I've ever been on, you won't find more than another female. The misogyny is real. It doesn't yeah. matter how far you find yourself or how empowered you think you are. It comes from everybody. Even your male colleagues who should know better, they do it. They weaponize things you're going through. They would yeah. meet you in the morning and think that, oh, you're sweating. You might, mm. might, must be menopausal. Yeah. That's how they will say it. Yeah. It's almost to try and belittle you, right. make you look smaller than you right. are. You're yeah. even dating somebody, for example, and they can meet you on a good day mm. and make a statement that can demoralize you the whole day. Yeah. It takes a very... Are, are you in your period? Why are you yes, acting? Why are you, like, why are you acting? moody? Yeah. Exactly. Don't forget, even when they crack these very unsavory jokes, you find women who even go and yeah. try and prime them up and pump, you know, literally encouraging them to do it. No, no, it's not that kind of woman. The reason we had a funny chat, she met me and said, oh, I have this friend who is a plastic surgeon, and all he wants to do is meet you, Joyce. <laughs> so she went on and on and I came and said, oh, prof, you know, please, is he going to do my face? Will he reduce my hips? <laughs> what is he going to do for me? Right. You know, you'd expect that she'd probably berate you <laughs> and, you know, no, she laughed and said, oh, you're joking. Yeah. I wouldn't take anything away from you. Yeah. Stay just as you are. Uh -huh. That is Nana Jane of Okwajima. Right. With all the qualifications. Bridget, since Nana appeared on this scene, she's been active on the manifesto committee, on the education committee, on the infrastructure committee. She has literally become almost like the administrator of the National Democratic Congress. But how often do you hear Nana? No. Come out in the morning and boast about it. She has been at the highest echelons of decisions and conversations. How often do you hear her boast about what secrets she's keeping, be they state, private, or otherwise? Mm -hmm. But many students have gone to Nana with one problem or the other. Many individuals from all walks of life. I mean, can you imagine what life was like on the campus of the University of Cape Coast? Think about it. Mm -hmm a woman like Nana, and yet she bored stoically right through in her service to Ghana as a female education minister. How did Nana fare? And yet you still hear people coming up with some I, I, very... I, I, I even think that if, um, if you have a candidate and in fact nothing negative is said about him or her, maybe there must be a problem. But if what is being said about her is something like she's not approachable or she's not out there. I mean, then really, oh, there is no, nothing. No, no. I would we have been we don't, we don't feel traumatized. No, no, they say we don't, I would we, no, no, they say we don't, we don't feel, feel her. her. But yes. of course, why would you feel her? Yeah. She's not boasting. Yes. She's and not bragging. Yeah. She's not walking into a room filled with yeah. arrogance and, and uh, you know, arrogance of power. Yeah. She's not telling you lies. She's not making pledges that she yes. cannot keep. Yeah. She's not making promises that you've heard so many times and nobody has delivered. She's telling you that this right. time, try something different. Right. And ironically, the very traits that people admire in women who are not in public office, like at home, you expect her to be, okay, um, whether it's humble, I'm using humble advisedly, you know, to be humble, not to speak, not to be heard. That very trait that they admire, they abhor in a public figure. Because she really, if we're looking at a textbook, who a woman should, then she's a perfect woman. Oh, but she's not. And yet... She's they still, they she, abhor that, she, she's still that not. she should be boasting. But then you say, okay, are you trying to compete yes. with men? But she's still not. Because you see, she has walked a journey that few men have walked. Yes. Worn bigger shoes than most men. Mm. The difference is that Nana hasn't picked up photography and spent every day of her life boasting about what she's achieved and done. She hasn't spent time walking the corridors or platforms of media outlets telling you what interventions she made as vice chancellor of the University of Cape Coast. How often have you heard until Nana went on that program on that international platform yeah. where the question of amplification became a huge subject? Look at the applause that greeted Nana when she spoke. And remember that she literally spoke to the heart of many mothers. Yes. She spoke about your child, your children, how you use language, what languages you train them in, yes. how teaching children a language they understand literally makes it easier for them to better appreciate what they're being taught. Mm -hmm. How children should actually start instructions when they are actually being put through it in a language that they can relate to, a language spoken at home. You've heard parents who speak English to their children, whose own sentence construction is so poor that they are passing this on to their children. Mm 
Whereas if they spoke in the mother tongue of these children, the children will be better able to understand so that the right person who instructs them at school will then take up this responsibility. Nana has made a profound impact, not only on folklore or on literature, but on our societal norms as well. Walking in the footsteps of academia is not a joke. The cat calls from students. But think about it, ever since Nana appeared on the scene, have you heard any student nope. who has come out to challenge her competence? Have you heard Nana ever speak out of ten? Have you heard her talk down to anybody, for example? I think that Nana represents a new, refreshing kind of leadership, a safe pair of hands, experience like no other. I read an interesting story by Albert Einstein, deemed as the world's most intelligent, and he put it beautifully. No matter how much knowledge you have, how many qualifications you can possibly have, without experience, you are nothing. I think that Nana wears her experience with enormous pride. And let me say one thing that I say to all of you in the media space that I meet. We must start to recognize that female leaders will not be as boisterous or as aggressive or as loud or as vocal or as all the things that we don't want to see a woman, mm. a woman do yeah. or be, for example. They will lead very differently. You know, when I see women who brag till date, I find it very off-putting. When mm. I see women who boast, I find it very off-putting. If I say to a woman, oh, you look beautiful, I expect you to just say, thank, thank you. you. I know. Uh -huh. Oh, I know, I'm yes, aware. I know. Oh, say something yes. else. <laughs> or they, they go into it. Oh, you know, I have a lot of them like that. That's or, eh. Think about it. Oh, your dress is easy. Exactly. <laughs> I guess Graciously just gracious. say thank you. Yeah. That is Nana. You understand? You know, look, in terms of what we achieved with parity for the girl child, that could only have happened because this is an individual who understood what we needed at this time, yeah. who appreciated the exigency of the day. But note that going through those walls from Wesley Girls all the way through the University of Cape Coast, there's one thing you know, how intelligent girls can be, how high their IQ, how knowledgeable, how quickly they absorb information, how fast they understand things that are thought, how girls absorb everything, faster even than the males that they compete with. Look at the awards that have been going around on the university campuses in medicine and science. Go to Aseshi, for example. Go to the University of Ghana, Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Even the elections that girls were actually initially banned from and asked to be women's commissioners and serve tea and coffee at meetings. Today, what are we seeing? The girls are contesting for SRC on male-dominated campuses and winning. The numbers of girls on these campuses have actually, what, gone higher. What is it that a Ghanaian woman needs to prove? I look at Greater Accra, maybe because I'm a politician. Look at the number of female MPs they have. Because culturally, Ghan women have been known to be what? Very, very hard women. Mm. They work hard. Go to the markets and see how the market queens run the markets. How they, con they even discipline other market women. So you can see the numbers of members of parliament that this region has given to all the political parties. It's because here, they expect women to lead even in many ways. You go to the Ashanti region, where they have a history of Yahasantua, for example. So women have a certain place. So look at the system of transition in the chieftaincy, for example, in most Akan areas. Women play a very key role. Yeah. The whole thing about Wafase started from this concept of how you should see women. Whereas you take the northern region where I come from, where culturally, women are known to work very, very hard, but must also what, succumb or submit to the male dominant factor. So you find that even when you offer a woman something in the north, she must go home and show it to the husband or to daddy, for example. She must seek his permission when you offer an appointment. She must actually ask for people to consult in a way. But look at where our queen mothers have taken our culture to. Recently, we buried the Bunsunu Uche, and as I sat there, and read the history of her children, her contribution to society from that small village called Bosnia. I learned one thing, how women have led courses 
reforms impacted our society in ways that we don't even celebrate enough. I'm looking forward that when Nana is sworn in, these are conversations that she will actually help to promote. Then I ask myself, what would I want to see in Nana's very first presentation upon her renomination? Yes, she is here to speak. I want, to, to, speak. I want yeah. to see her take up a course such as social justice, social protection, girl child education and impact, courses that matter. Look, when unemployment becomes a huge threat, the women that suffer. It's the women that suffer. Yeah. When girls get pregnant as teenagers, yeah. who their suffers? School. It's their school, everything. When them. girls fall out of school. Look, young teenagers have sex when they're probably not supposed to. They have unprotected sex, for example. It is a girl who gets pregnant. It is a girl who truncates her education. It is a girl whose life gets truncated and stopped. What happens to the male child? How often do you even hear about the boys who get them pregnant? No. Maybe if it's a male teacher, you would hear about it. If it's another kid that they're with, you would never hear about the child. The parents have been harsh it up because they don't want their family name dragged into this. I want to see Nana take up this position of that woman who delivers that social reform that will make it better for women to improve their lives, to have better access to funds. Look, being empowered is not enough. I tell people all the time. So be it, I have a voice. You have a voice. Without the necessary economic backing or independence, how far will that take you to? How often do you see a woman appeal, approach another woman? Oh, you've impressed me so much. Let me sponsor the clothes you wear for your show. It's not the thing that women do. How often do you see a woman approach you and say, oh, I'm impressed by the contribution you make to society. Let me take responsibility for paying your children's school fees. No. But you see other men who approach men, even in our political space, and do that for men. They don't do that for women. When your male colleagues approach you for support, for example, you will go around and find it for them. When you approach them for support, what do they do? It's not the same. I want to see Nana raise issues of equity, of equality, of justice, not just for women, but advocate for a better society. Because it is what women do. It is how women deliver. It is how women make an impact. It is how women make a difference. And history is replete. Look at the chief justices that we've had in Ghana, for example. I worked very closely with Madame Theodore Wood for years because okay. largely I used to uh, uh, literally lead the training for magistrates and judges in terms of maritime. It was a program I ran for many years. How often have you heard me speak about that? No. Thank you. So that is what I mean. It is not something that women do. We believe largely that, oh, let your work speak for you. Understand? Yes. It so, I mean, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned the issue of um, her first outing. Absolutely. I want to see Absolutely. her presentation. Absolutely. And personally, I would want her to speak to, you know, how we can empower women financially. Absolutely. And one of the things that this government has done is to collapse a lot of the microfinance companies. In fact, the bank that and was them, put up yes. largely as a women's world bank. I found that they didn't collapse. Wow. Yes, absolutely. And you know how Parkway Syndrome's banks, for example, used to impact society. They've all collapsed. Think about it. Even in the bank rationalization exercise, who suffered most? In the course of the pandemic, they take who small suffered loans most? From these, uh, in the course of a conflict, who suffers most? Women Where we have these extremely atrocious interest rates of 23% and counting. How is that poor woman? going to access anything like that? And how will she survive? How will she cope? Indeed, how will she even get to the bank when we are promised each person with a bank account? And where is it today? We we're told that e-levy will be done for free. Now there's a 1% levy. Where is it today? You know, there are some social imbalances that also hold women back. And like I said, no matter where you find yourself, Bridget, make no mistake. And I'm sure you know yes. what I'm talking about. You will experience it. So imagine that Nana, a man, with the achievements that she has. Oh no, she'll be on every platform. Thank In you. fact, uh, there are 
candidates who go out and say, I have employed 8,000 people. Thank I mean, you. you don't even need to fact check, verify. Thank they you. are saying it. I have paid you. the school fees of 100 children. But women don't boast. Thank and you. that's why you don't see that. It's a, in, in, it's, it's a very, big, very issue. big issue. So we're taking our very first mm -hmm. break. When we come back from the break, um, I would want to show you what women leadership do or how women leaders have performed. COVID was terrible. It destroyed economies. But the countries that had women leaders performed unbelievably, uh, incredibly amazing. They did so well in saving lives and uh, reducing uh, mortality. We'll be back to talk more about uh, Professor Jane Nano Poku's nomination. And also, you know, if you decide to do this, if you're a woman and you want to you go into public office, I would want to find out from Madam uh, uh, Joyce Bauer herself what kind of attacks she faced in being somebody who expresses her opinion on what's happening in the country. We'll be right back. Right, so welcome back to One on One uh, with me, Bridget Otu. Uh, before the break, we were talking about Professor Jane Nanopoku, her expertise, her experience, impact, and the achievements, the mammoth, the gargantuan achievements that she's very quiet about it. Quiet because it is one, maybe her nature, and also largely the nature of many women. They are not like men who boast about every little thing, every minute thing, because Sometimes, even when a woman is doing more, she prefers her, her partner to shine, her husband to shine, her boss to shine, her boss to take credit and be in the background to uh, just support. And yet they still get criticized for not being loud enough. And when those that are loud, they say, are you trying to be a man? So a woman cannot win whichever way you put it. But this is where her, uh, Professor Jane Nopoku's nomination is even vital because she's partnering with someone who believes in women and has shown over the years that indeed she, he does believe in women, uh, John Dramani Mahama, uh, by first nominating her and then re-nominating against all odds. odds. Yeah. That is not easy to no. come by. That's no, not, not easy at all. So before the break, I mentioned I wanted to show you this. So during COVID, uh, you know, uh, we lost several lives, uh, thousands, even in Ghana, you know, we lost some very prominent people. Of course, every life matters, I must say, but over a thousand people lost their lives during COVID. And in the countries, you know, globally, female-led countries, um, this is an article um, uh, by The Guardian, and uh, female-led countries, right, handled coronavirus better. And this yeah. is science. This is the study that is saying this, that now the countries that were led by women had systematically and significantly better COVID-19 outcomes research show now locking down earlier they did they locked down earlier they s suffered as many as um, half just a half of the deaths on average as those that were led by mm -hmm. men right and um of course angela merkel that's germany's angela yes. merkel new zealand jacinda yeah, arden who know. has decided to just say look yeah. like look i'm tired I'm okay i i'm done and maybe women know when to stop. You know, they are ambitious, but maybe not over ambitious. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with being over ambitious. But the fact that they have the awareness to say, it's enough. Somebody else must do it. You don't get that a lot with male leadership. So when people ask that, okay, what is she bringing to uh, the tickets? I mean, largely you've answered that, but I'm looking at it in, 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 in respect of this. That how does she compliment John Dramani Mahama, in his decision making, decision that affects uh, the country, the decision that affects everyone, including women and children. Well, Bridget, look, let me ask you a question. What did late Ali Mahama bring to the table? What did Dr. Mahmoud Obamia bring to the table? Mm -hmm. Lots of economic in, jargons. In John Mahama's day himself, take all their resumes compared to what Nana is offering us. We can't compare. Is it because Nana is not purportedly working at the Bank of Ghana as a deputy governor and telling us all the tales that we don't know about? Or just plain spinning yarns because she wants to be running mate? Mm. That's one. Secondly, is it because Nana is not making huge sums of money and dishing it out wherever? But go and check. The support that she extends to females across the country, mm. be it when she was in private spaces as an academic 
or even now. Mm -hmm. But ask yourself one thing, Bridget. You know, there's something that I always ask. In the days of Nana, working in the University of Cape Coast, yeah. you know how many women she inspired to better than herself? The Cape Coast Medical School, she fought single-handedly to have it established before she even left. They had a whole STEM unit that was put in place. She led it, largely because she had children who mingled with girls in STEM, and so she understood the need, not just for people to know how to read, but that the world needed female or women scientists. And that science was also important. Don't forget, look, I say it all the time. Most of us in my family were largely very arts oriented, except for mm -hmm. two of my sisters who are in medicine. Mm -hmm. But you know something? Everybody got at least a B or an A in mathematics. Because think about where can you go to without a certain numeracy, a certain numerical capacity, yeah. You, you understand, but this is where we have a problem. In those days, until Nana became an education minister, how often did you hear people touting her achievements yeah. or what she was and what she wasn't? And Nana herself has been very self-effacing, very demure and humble in all the glory yeah. and the paths of glory that she continues to walk. If there's any female today who deserves to be sworn in as Madame Vice President, I think that Nana is even overqualified. Yeah. Like I said, yeah. look at all the resumes that we've had over the years. How many of them are equal comparatively to what Nana is or has achieved? You know, look. Do you think that that's, in quotes, overachievement also sometimes work against women? I don't know anything that is about overachievers. Mm. I think that achievers, uh, achievers naturally, they are born achievers. Like I said, I always take inspiration from Nana Jin Sam, CP, as I like to call it. <laughs> that should tell you something about her level of strength, her stoicism, that she was born and imbued with leadership qualities long before today. And her sense of leadership is not the overbearing, overarching type of leadership. Right. But ask yourself, what does Nana bring to John Mahama? You know, look, in 2020, being female, in understanding the exigency of the day, that in 2016, you put it very harshly on that. I even disagreed with you, <laughs> and I told you so. Yeah. John Mahama had literally, I don't know whether it was uh, like using artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. but remember that large interest groups were paid to tarnish his hard-won reputation. Yes. Yeah. We left office knowing that a lot of harm had been done to his reputation yeah. to the point where our then vice president's wife even mm. could look Ghanaians in the eye and say very unsavory things to a man who was on the level of her father and more. And nobody chastised her for yeah. saying so. Sure. So she even got encouraged to continue to do so. And by that, the current second lady, lady insulting I, the I, former president. Absolutely. Yeah. No wife in Ghana's history, be it in the capacity of a first lady or second lady, had ever made it their business to talk about another spouse. They would lead like Nana Kunedua, Jiman Rollins, like Nadu, Mills, like Mrs. Misatha, like our mother, Auntie Lodina Mahama. Supporting their husband, but doing so in the way that Ghanaians are used to. Even Auntie Rebecca, current first lady, I don't remember her even mentioning Mr. Mahama's name. Yeah. And every time we've met her in public, she's been very gracious towards Mr. Mahama. I haven't heard her grant any interviews, for example, or make any speeches where, indeed, even at the recent program at UPSA, for example, she actually led by imagining Ghana with Madame President, for example. She spoke to many of our dreams and aspirations, not because she's MPP and I'm NDC. She spoke to a lot of things that many Ghanaians, many females think about. Let me say one thing that happened in 2020. Nana's presence actually softened Mr. Mahama's image in the eyes of many people. Right. Yes, when you meet... Auntie By the Lodina, way, I had this agreement. She was speaking to the article I wrote. <laughs> Absolutely. Someone said you were cool. 
No, or someone thinks I was even surprised. I know, I know, yeah, right. yes, I did, actually took her on yeah. because I thought that I was a very yeah. harsh you phrase. Yes, you understand? You yes, but that you is did. you, the journalist, in you. Yes. It actually would lead to a certain debate. Yes. It actually evoked certain emotions, comments and emotions. emotions. Yes. You understand? Yes. Even when I read it. Yes. But I would think about it later on. And when I reflected upon it, I thought, yeah, okay, maybe. In that 2016 exactly. environment. That's yeah. how bad it was. And like I tell my colleagues on the side of the MPP, this is not 2016. Now we all know about artificial intelligence. Yes. And today even Buckingham Palace has, is suffering that. Of all places, yes. is suffering from artificial intelligence. I remember how a particular company chased me across the length and breadth of the world even in my private space, working just to act a living for myself, about a Mary, for example. Which of those stories are true? There is something Nana did. She literally softened the image of Mr. Mahama in the eyes of many. She brought out that aspect of Mr. Mahama that people had actually forgotten about, especially prior to 2016. She was also a reason why we developed a certain narrative because the NDC is actually a very large male-dominated political party. Yes. One of the largest in the eyes of this country. But there's something that the NDC achieved, even in the days of strong man Jerry Rollins. He had a wife who led a phenomenal and that to social Rollins. Yes. change that led to many women finding their voices. Mm. Eugene actually culminated in the passage of Ghana's very first Domestic Violence Act. They're still waiting for the affirmative action bill to pass. I've seen it on the list of Parliament's duties for this month. Mm -hmm. Remember also that this is another thing I would want to see now. Now, champion, for example, mm -hmm. if they don't pass it in this term in office, but of course, I'm sure right now, maybe Mr. Akifado <laughs> will quickly go and accent it because he want to sweep the carpet from under mm -hmm. Nana. He would know very well that Nana would love to lead or champion that course. There's a social protection bill in the pipelines currently. I'd want to see her champion that course. You know, look, maternal mortality is still with us. Recently, we lost an amazing young woman. Yes. Made me my dress yeah. on my 50th birthday. Yes, yes, yes. yes yeah, I amazing. Oh, I saw it soft on social. Spoke. I was so sad. Amazing, yes, amazing. She went to Very place. creative. Just at some point, Nana student. So think about it. I want to see Nana champion these courses. You know, one of the things I admire most about most of our first ladies in particular, they've always made championing the course of women their issues, but they champion what? The very social ones. I want Nana to look at sexual harassment that we all suffer even to date. This morning I asked you, are you going to have a, an arrangement that will let my leg go? <laughs> Because I've developed this habit of not yeah. wanting my legs to show sure. because they would send you all sorts of comments and also right. very derogatory in right. most cases. I so wish for, I come out with pick and two yes. shorts. Yes. So for all the comments, for all the yes, yes, yes. Legs. No, no, I don't. I, I deliberately don't. Yes, I know. You yes. know, and and then yeah. you ask yourself, why do we do that? Yeah. But that is the society in which we live in. Men do it. Even women do yeah. it. Yeah. You know, I saw a video of you and I could see your lovely ties showing. <laughs> I remember one time granting an interview. The lady who herself had gone through some very serious challenges, for example. And I said to her how many times I'd gone through fertility treatments after I had my son. Mm. It was women, older women, who were actually not too happy with me sharing this information. But I said to my, if I was a pastor, mm. think about it. Mm. My story would become a testimony. Yes. A testament of resilience. Right. Of an example of why we shouldn't we shouldn't kill ourselves too much. That God in his own wisdom. God in his You're taking own me wisdom. To church. We are in the spirit time, in the spirit. God in his own yeah, wisdom we'll make makes things beautiful. Yes. And he has done it for many women. I'm sure Nana in her day juggled. And I remember a day she told me a story about what she used to do with her kids when she had to leave home immediately. When she had an important meeting and had these young children to worry about. I remember Betty Moldy Drusu telling me, it's not how many hours you spend with your children, it's the quality mm. of the time you spend with your children. So check out. You find a lot of our stay-at-home mothers. Some get very good results. Others not so good.
Sometimes you can even smother your children with too much love and attention. And most of the time, they are teenagers. They don't and like it. And then, then even I mean, becoming independent I mean, become a My problem. son doesn't even want me to come into school. <laughs> He's a head boy. One day, I'm walking in the compound, and a classmate of his, another young girl, walks up to me. Oh, but you know, Camille is so independent. He doesn't like you coming here. <laughs> oh. So, wow. Sorry. His classmate telling me how independent he is. So, no need for me to come here. Yeah. All mothers want to be at the award ceremonies, don't they? <laughs> we literally live for those days. Yeah. But yeah. imagine that your teenager now doesn't even want to come in there because right. it's too much attention and all people are saying it. Think about it. I think mm -hmm. Nana Jean presents all our aspirations. You know, you find that most of the criticism, like you said, comes also from women. Yeah. The question is, what are they criticizing? Mm. You understand? What are they expecting to see? What is the example that all of us aspire mm -hmm. to? Nana hasn't really raised a daughter she's also raised sons and they're yes. still amazing mm -hmm. boys and men you understand and many other people who've passed through their hands what is the future that ghana wants to see in fact the bible itself has its own natural order you have women what support men you have women balance it out for men but we've had women even in the bible leading us for example and many other things so why not a female why, not Why a female? ever not a female? Right. So, Especially um, one so accomplished and decorated. But the reason is simple, Bridget. The horn <laughs> is not so loud. Right. The boastfulness. We're so, you, we're so used to that. Measured. Yeah, we're so used to people climbing and platforms, jumping and saying it themselves. I am says, this. Yes. I am this. I have Always. 100, 200 they, million they in my account. They can't wait. And the boastfulness is like mind-boggling and the adulation gets to men more than it gets to women women yeah. you find that the more women get popular they start to be more self-effacing right not men you understand right say so, something in the same mm -hmm. words that a man says it but you see how both will be received very differently because the woman didn't shout enough she didn't sit and, you know, mm. rearrange her shoulders ten times. Have you seen how our men folks sit? <laughs> yes, yes. When they sit, it's almost yes, like, you yes, know, yes. and they... Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Women are very demure. But I always say that is what even people find most alluring about yes, women. Yes, that's... But, I, and, and, uh -huh. but, and, but and they are using the same against you. Thank you. Just, so you can't win with no. that. Yes, you can't win. Once you are so born female, at, you can't win. Yeah. So I want to look at, you know, another thing that people talk about, numbers. Oh, she comes from the central region and she didn't do well in the central region. Really? What, are, what data are you speaking to? What data are you speaking to? Yes, yeah, she comes from the central region. And um, in the 2016, 2016, she wasn't the running mate. In 2016, NDC had only, what, is it four parliamentary seats? In the central region. Four, in the yeah. central region. In 2020. Note that at the time, we also had a candidate from the central region. We had, yes, for, with a candidate yeah. from the central region. Yeah. Later, uh, Parkway C. Yes, Arthur, yes, right? Yeah. In 2016, he was from the central region. NDC had four parliamentary seats. In 2020, with Professor Jane Nano Poku, they had 13. 13. How can you use it yeah. anywhere with this irrefutable data and say that mm. she didn't make any impact? Mm. NDC had that four in 2016 she wasn't the vice presidential no, nominee she not. wasn't the candidate no. then no. they had four with her they had 13 and also let's talk about the numbers presidential oh she comes from the central region mm -hmm. presidential is it data no lie i don't mm -hmm. speak with emotion and and no no, no. it's so easy to get yeah. caught up in all that but yeah. let's speak to the number what is the number saying and i deliberately told them to pull the numbers but let's go all the way back, back. Yeah. and the data shows that she has had the highest jump in the presidential vote than any other vice president. So let me even let me just you know, just go to 2008, you know. And 2008, we had a presidential candidate from the region. Yes, that was from Professor the region. From the region. Mills of yes. Blessed memory. Exactly. And remember that President, President Mills had actually been contesting for the third time. Up me, to me, he was known, well known. He was well known in the, the, in the region. Absolutely. I mean, across the country. Yes, yes, yes. Right. And he had been a lecturer also for a very long time. Yes. An academic, almost cutting the same steps as Nana Jane in particular. Yeah. And so that should be where you measure it. Right. But look at the level of. And don't forget, President Mills had even come in at some point to the IRS as a commissioner. Yes. And most of the reforms that we speak of today in tax 
were led by him. But he had also taught at the law faculty for many, many years. Sure. And then he became Jerry John Rawlins' vice running mate and, of sure. course, vice president of Ghana. Sure. And served also for two terms before he stood in his own right as sure. flag bearer. Yes. So take it from there. Right. So, the, so this is what the data is saying. At the time, NDC had about 50.6% in the central region. I'm speaking to just the central region. Right. Now, 2012, NDC went 52.1%. Now, my math is no good, so I'm just going to use calculator. <laughs> so, 50.6, and then that's 2008. 2012, mm -hmm. they dropped to, just a second, uh, please allow me to work my math, okay? 50.6, <laughs> they jumped to uh, 52, 52.1, 52.1. 52 there was an increase in their votes of 1.5%. So, 2012, 2008, 50.6, 52.1. So, the jump was... 1.5%, um, just 1.5%. Now let's go to 2016. I will put all this on TV so that it's easier for you. In 2016, it wasn't Jane Opoku who was the vice presidential no. uh, nominee. She wasn't. NDC had 43.4%. They dropped 43.4%. 43.4%. She wasn't. It was John Mahama and um, Park Wissi of, yeah. of, of Blessed Memory. Right? They dropped to 43.4%. Then John Mahama says, okay, I believe in women. Let me partner Jane Nanopoko. Brings Jane on. And 2020, NDC had 45.9% in the central region. 45.9%. When you do the calculation, NDC's votes in the central region went up by 2.5%. That is the biggest jump from 2008 to 2020. 2.5%. How can you sit anywhere and tell me that she made no impact in the central region? Like, how can you? This is the date. I'm not the one saying it. Oh. This is it. So NDC had its biggest jump mm -hmm. in the vote mm -hmm. when Jane Nanopoku Prof partnered Mr. John Dramani Mahama. Mm -hmm. Again, so, she didn't go out there on any platform to say mm -hmm. that. When I, I was a uh, 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 vice presidential candidate, NDC's vote in the central region went up by 2% as against... But that's the point I'm making. Ex exactly, the Maybe point you're making. Maybe she ought to be making this be argument. Making, yes, yes. You understand? Uh -huh. Maybe this is an argument that must be formulated beautifully, yeah. crafted in a very nice language. Above all, she also did not stand on any platform to tell big, huge lies, lies yes. about the 170 questions that she herself had no idea even made sense, let alone pass them on to somebody, okay. expecting them to know better or respond to these questions. Bridget, the central region is one of Ghana's foremost swing regions. Yeah. And I always say that there are people, look, it's a citadel. Africa region, myself, it's the we citadel are so unpredictable. of education. Yes. You know, I remember that you will see someone selling a kakro. Yeah. And when you approach her, <laughs> Efi Debua, the <laughs> thing she will tell you, yeah. even as you're walking. I will never forget telling someone like that once that I was from the Northern region. Uh -huh. I'll tell you what she said to me. <laughs> Very discerning. Right. And look at it. I said the best schools in Ghana, in the world, yeah. can be found in the central region. There's a reason so why You don't that expect is. there to be a region that will be like all the Easy. other regions and right. the, you know what I mean. Yes, they raise many professors. In fact, yeah. people from the central region will tell you one interesting thing, that academics from the region are very, mm -hmm. you know, like a oh, bit snotty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how they describe them. Yeah. So maybe it's time for all academics from central region to come down to another <laughs> level, you know. Uh, maybe uh, it will take Nana <laughs> to do that for us. Before we go, reduce before, before it for us, go. you know. You are vocal and I love how you're using your social media. Um, in expressing your views. I mean, honest, honest, um, <laughs> uh, honest, you know, I said honest. Honesty is missing in our politics. And Jane Nanopoke is someone that people trust. Yeah. And that's important. People are losing trust in politicians. Yeah. And she's not your, you know, everyday yeah. joke. She's not. Yeah. So people trust her. And it's important. And as a woman, she yeah. carries herself yes. with that dignity. With enormous and grace. In, yes. An enormous yes. grace. You know, yes. she's really gracious. So, Absolutely. and I see you talk about what's happening. Yeah. And... How do you deal with you know, people who just come, oh. again, emotional attacks, you know, personal attacks on, uh, no. on, on, when online? You, when you are raised by a very domineering mother, mm -hmm. if you are not careful, you either become as domineering or more so, or you probably become so, so, so timid. Mm -hmm. What I have done, Bridget, is to try and achieve a very good balance. Right. I'm naturally very soft-spoken. 
I'm naturally very polite, very perfunctory. Mm. I am probably as accomplished or probably achieved as much as any other person that you meet. Right. But you know one thing? I have learned so much more in the space of 10 years that I've been in politics. Funny mm. enough, one day I saw a screaming headline. I think I was sitting with Mr. Mahama. And I said, oh, funny how I'm even finding this headline so funny <laughs> that I'm even laughing at it. <laughs> I said, you know, that's how I know that I've changed, yeah. that I've become very, very hard. Mm. In the past, oh my goodness, Mr. Mahama has suffered. <laughs> I'll be so sad, I'll be oh. so emotional, and I'll go on and on. Oh, and I'll start calling like everybody. <laughs> funny enough, between 2016 and now, mm -hmm. I think there's anybody who has matured, who has grown in all humility, who has come to accept that how people receive my male counterparts, they will never receive me or accept ah. me as such. I call myself an ambassador for the voiceless woman. Right. And I take it very, very seriously. I will do my politics. I'll get beaten for it, bashed for it. But I found out something very interesting that now when you even want to rise above a certain level, take Joyce Bauer on mm. and then people will pay attention. Right. So it means that you must, must be, doing be doing something, something right. right. Yes. And then you ask an interesting question. Do I have somebody who does it? No. Yes. No. You, you tweet yourself. My you, class you one teacher <laughs> will tell you today that I've always had a knack for writing. Yeah. From when I was a little girl, my imagination, my dad used to tell me, oh, Jay, if you use your imagination to do all the things that you mm. shouldn't be doing, I'm sure you'll be a first class student. I have a fantastic imagination. I don't post a third of the things I write. I have diaries that size. And every time you see me, I have one colorful diary all day. Right. Yes, I, I have. use them they as a here. way yes, <laughs> of noting everything that happens in my life. If you pass by my office, and you drop this pen on my table, I'll write it with a notation with your name and the date. Mm -hmm. And so I don't forget anything. Not an act of kindness, not nastiness, not disrespect. I remember everything with details that people will be surprised about. In that regard, I'm my father's daughter. But you know one thing, I enjoy every lesson that comes my way. Like every woman, I will suffer it, even from women. Don't forget, I work in a male-dominated env environment. You will have it from all sorts of women. But let me be honest, you also have those who are always in your corner. That even in rooms where you are absent, there's always someone to vouch for you. Sure. Just be credible, be honest, be authentic. Wear your virtue with pride. And remember that you are actually an ambassador for many other people yes. who probably will never get to experience you. And let me be honest, Nana Jean, from the first time that I encountered Nana, I think I've always called her Nana Jean CP. So she's literally like a big sister, even though she's more like our mother. Yeah. And I think that anybody, I want her to open, I don't know, is it what? A two free number. <laughs> so you can yes. call, okay, all right. Thank you. Phone a friend, phone a sister, phone a mother. So they can, someone yeah. you can trust. I, I, yes, I, yes. And I, I would even add one more that uh, take it a step further. That yes, phone a friend, <laughs> phone a sister, phone a brother and say, look, uh, why we must get this yes. uh, amazing woman We've tried in office. everything. Uh, yes, we have. we have. I mean, what have you got to yes. you've, tried, you've seen the noisemakers. Don't you want you've a seen, vice president who comes to the taste the school prolific, feeding? You've uh, seen methodical... Yes. Yes. Um, strategic yes. and pathological lies. Attempts what to have you got to lose? Like a whole society, a whole imagine, nation. Yes. Yes. Imagine what, what, what have yes. you got to lose? Trusting a trusted no, don't, competent... Don't you want to see your vice president, for example, yes. walk into a kitchen where they're cooking for kids, yes. sample the food, tell you what is good with it, what is wrong with it, what you need to improve. That is the sort of vice president I am looking forward to. Yeah. Not the vice president that I see only in the convoys or only behind the console. And of course, I want to see a vice president who's working with the lot, not just a Ghanaian. I, I, I want a vice president yes. who takes responsibility. Oh, but Nana has always yes, taken responsibility. No, I mean, yes, that, that's exactly. So that's what I'm looking forward yes. to. Like, a vice president Absolutely. who will not throw their, bu their others, bosses under others, the bus. Others will tell you they and want say an they example. Are mate and, no, she, she's a, a, a spare driver Absolutely. and she will take responsibility Absolutely. for that. So and thank you. Has.
I want to say a big thank you to you for, thank you for coming much. to talk about uh, Professor you. Jane Nano Buku. You. you call her what? Nana thank Jane. You. Nana Jane. Ah, Nana Jane Stipe. And Stipe okay. is senior prefect. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, interesting. So yeah. that little girl from Commander yes. was always a leader. Yeah. It didn't start just recently. Right. Think about it. Right. When girls repose their confidence in one younger girl, it tells you something. Right. And, you know, and, I, I, went and I have a story myself. I know we've, we've gone I, over I, that time. I went to visit <laughs> my headmistress recently, just before we yeah. close. As soon as I walked, oh, Joyce, there you are. <laughs> You seem to have lost weight. Ah. He was making you look even taller. <laughs> I thought, wow, she's 84. Yeah. And from all those days ago, sharp. that she still remembers yeah. you, sharp. there must Brain. have been something very unique about you. My class one teacher still follows my posts. Think about how old she is today. Be the example that all of us want to bask in. That is Nana Jane for you. You know, sometimes I don't even like that professor, but it's too I know, much. You I know, know what I, know. I mean? So, yes, so yes. Please, with permission, we, can, we are going to Jane. call her Nana Jane. Nana Jane. Jane. You know, with permission, yes, yes we're calling her Nana Jane. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, I look forward to hearing her address. I remember in 2020, her address uh, was so touching, very relatable. And yes, I wish we had like a minute or two to show you that video when she launched and that girl was watching her on TV thinking that, look, I can be like that. I want to be like this woman. Yeah, I think we should find a minute or two to play that video. My name is Bridget Osu. Thank you so much for joining us. It was really an exciting and an interesting conversation. I've enjoyed myself. It didn't even feel like an interview. See you again next week on One on One.